Welcome back. We are still inside of the Institute. Have you had time to examine my latest reports on Batch 274? Not yet. I've been reviewing Father's plans to expand our operation. Dr. Holdren's Synth Gorilla Project is showing going. promising That's results. All this must be a little overwhelming for you. The gorillas are very cool. Try not to think too much about it. Well, I suppose you're right. Dr. Carlin's Hi, doing Doc. some amazing yes, things. Yes, yes, I'm sure that whatever you have to say crops. is very interesting, but now simply isn't a good time. Ooh. Working on something important? Uh, all of my work is important. Now, if you're quite finished, I'd very much like to get back to these mental equations. They're difficult enough without the distractions. Equations for what? Uh, honestly, you wouldn't understand them. Now, I'm afraid I must end this little chat, although it's been so very diverting. Doctor? Well, you're gonna have to work pretty hard to impress anyone down here. Dr. Watson doesn't think I'm Institute material. I'm gonna prove him wrong. The latest synth generation is just amazing. Those guys in robotics are working miracles. Sweet.
There we go. Scanner's clear. Perimeter movement detected. Nice. Stealth unit in the AO. Weapons hot. Well, that went much better. Personal record. 
Dr. Brian Virgil. This will likely be my last recording. My requests to shut down the FEV program have repeatedly been denied. We've learned nothing useful in the last ten years. Why does Father insist on continuing it? If he won't see reason, then I have to take matters into my own hands. What we're doing... It's not right. It needs to stop. If anyone should find this after... After I'm gone. Know that I never wanted to hurt anyone. Anyone! Do you understand me? I'm gonna make sure the whole program is shut down. If not for good, then... At least for years to come. After that... I know what I'm about to do will be seen as a betrayal. Treason, he'll probably call it. So... I'm leaving. I have a plan. And if it works, I'll be somewhere safe. Somewhere not even the Coursers can find me. Everything that we've done. The lives we've taken. There is a God. May he have mercy on us all. Uh, this is Dr. Elliot with the official report for the Directorate from Bioscience. The date is, um, August. 2178. I'm pleased to report that, as has been the case during my tenure, Crop yields exceed expectations. In point of fact, everything down here is fine, with one notable exception. Dr. Frederick has informed me that the Directorate has pre-approved research on samples of the FEV virus, which he already has in his possession. Now, I'm not one to question the Directorate, you all know that. I don't even want to know where this came from, but, well, this is troubling, dangerous, possibly. I will do my best to make sure risks are minimized, but I really do hope that the consequences are understood. Male, mid-30s, poor overall health. Post-submersion results, consistent with standard results. Subject status, discarded. Female, late 30s, moderate overall health. Post-submersion results, initially consistent with standard results. Rapid decline in physical condition. Subject status, deceased. Male, early 30s, moderate overall health. Post-submersion results, physical condition consistent with standard results. Mental acuity, charting slightly higher than average. Subject status, tagged, discarded. Male, late 20s, above average overall health. Post-submersion results, rapid decline in mental capacity, anomalous physical results. Subject status, terminated. Female, early 20s, moderate overall health. Post-submersion results, rapid, excessive physical growth. Aggression far above normal parameters. Subject status, terminated. Male, mid-30s, poor overall health. Post-submersion results, inconclusive. Subject status, terminated. Subject unintentionally terminated during incident 5. Data should be culled from future reports. Female, early 30s, 
moderate overall health. Post-submersion results, inconclusive. Subject status, terminated. Subject unintentionally terminated during Incident 5. Data should be called from future reports. Latest round of testing complete. Results are all within expected parameters. Inform Dr. Zimmer directly, as he had ordered the tests personally. He seemed annoyed with the results, unsure what he was looking for. He declined to specify why he wanted the tests run to begin with. I have officially assumed the lead role on the project after Dr. Siverson's passing. Latest round of subjects show results similar to previous test runs over the last five years. No statistical deviation noted. Synthetic organics continue to perform well. The necessity of further tests is unexplained. Nothing new. Always the same. Have entered formal complaint with Directorate. These tests are not bringing in any valuable information. The Organics Project was spun off decades ago. Why do we insist on continuing this? Notes. Redacted. All inquiries about this project should now go straight to the director. The lab will be offline until further notice. This is Dr. Elliot reporting for the Bioscience Division, March 22-24. We just received another batch of subjects, but as my previous report stated, we're at an impasse here. More of the same won't help. The two most promising strains of FEV have been adapted to an ideal state, but we're still missing something. I am officially echoing the team's position. The most likely progress for our research on synthetic organics requires new avenues of exploration. Additional Commonwealth subjects will not help. It's the same problem across the board, exposure to too much radiation. We need something, someone new. There's a proposal we'll be putting forward. I am not entirely comfortable with it, but it seems the best course. Yeah, I noticed that they didn't bother trying it on their own people. Hmm. Goodies. Demand jumped another 5% this year. Hello. You really need Please all these courses that your dietary requirements halls? are being filled. What have you got? I can offer a range of nutritious and great tasting food supplements. Food Supplement 7 is very popular for its spicy flavor. And Food Supplement 91 is our newest offering. I believe so, yeah. I've got a few minutes to browse. Ayo's been on a tear lately. Ah, yes, hello. I was informed of your arrival. Welcome to the Institute. I'm Gallister. Charles Gallister. It's nice to meet you. Wait, me? Really? Well, thank you. That's, that's very nice of you to say. 
This guy has a memory Hello. like mine. Please He's got no clue what's going on. Requirements are being filled. Cure the common cold. I need medical attention. All right, hold still and I'll take a look. I have to admit, the third generation scents are really something. Here, this should take care of it. There. Good thing you didn't turn to one of those Commonwealth butchers for medical care. There's a stock of medical supplies over in requisitions, if you need more. Got it pretty bad. Makes me thankful for being down here. Hi, Doc. Welcome. Welcome. It is so good to meet you. I truly hope you come to think of the Institute as your home. What do you do here? Oh, I'm in charge of housing and provisions. It's my mission to ensure that everyone lives a comfortable and productive life. You should know that many of us consider it a great honor to have you here. Package upgrades I asked for. Maybe I should take some courses with me. You know, send a message. Mm. Please you don't. You smell like you've been above ground. Enough friction as it is between us and pretty much all the other departments. You going soft on me, Alana? My methods get results, and they will this time as well. You'll see. C241, Unit at Large, Investigation Underway. X236, Last Sighting, Good Neighbor. No recent sightings, Unit believed to be in railroad custody. Memwipe likely performed by now. 5943, Unit at Large, Investigation Suspended. C Notes, None, Last Sighting. Boston Airport. Investigation suspended. Area deemed too hazardous at this time. Eighty five ninety two. Unit located. Reclamation scheduled. X six eighty eight. Libertalia Radio Stronghold. Unit 8592 has been memwiped by railroad agents. New identity is Gabriel. Unit now low Unit now leads Raider Gang based at Libertalia. Shows highly aggressive tendencies. Has killed several dozen rivals and citizens. Suspect brain damage resulting from memwipe process. KB-23 Destroyed X-351 Remains located northeast of Saugus Ironworks Units remains discovered near Saugus Ironworks and returned to Robotics Division Unit destroyed by multiple gunshot wounds Suspect Raiders based out of Saugus Ironworks L-337 Unit at large, investigation underway. X-973. Last sighting, Corvega. Unit has been memwiped. New identity is Leo. Exercise extreme caution. Unit has been trained by railroad and is proficient with several weapons. Unit has evaded capture twice and wounded coursers on both occasions. The following individuals have proven useful in our reclamation operations. In exchange for caps, these persons have in the past provided information on escape synth sightings and suspected railroad activity. If you make a new contact, add the individual to the database. Director Ayo. Informant list. Cricket. Caravaneer. Mobile. Tommy Lonigan. Owner Proprietor Combat Zone Trash Can Carla Caravaneer Mobile Doc Weathers Caravaneer Mobile AJ Chem Dealer Good Neighbor Morowski Chem Supplier
good neighbor. Lucas Miller, Carabineer, Mobile. Henry Cook, Barkeep, Diamond City. Access Log, Secord A, Update Course or Maintenance Records, AOJ, Entered Supply Requisition Form, Small Arms Ammunition, X688, Update Case File, 66764B, Reclamation Successful, File Close, AOJ, Review and Update Target Tracking Database. AOJ, Review and Approve Revised Courser Training Procedures. The Directorate should take the synth escapes more seriously. <clears throat> I swear I spend half my time smoothing the feathers that Justin ruffles. We need to be able to collaborate with the other divisions, and that's a lot harder when they're always angry at us. What's Justin doing that's causing friction? Oh, he's just pushy and demanding. He thinks his problem should be everyone's biggest concern. I have to admit, though, the other divisions have never taken our needs as seriously as they should. I guess they see us as a necessary evil or something. It's really not fair. Oh, just listen to me. It's the first chance we've had to get acquainted, and all I want to do is complain. In any case, it was good to meet you. I can't imagine living on the surface. It sounds like a nightmare. Constant vigilance is vital to preventing synth escapes. Excuse me, Doctor. So, here you are. Justin Ayo, Acting Director of the Synth Retention Bureau. I'll be upfront with you. We're going to be keeping a close eye on you for the near future. Despite your relation to Father, you're a bit of an unknown quantity. I'm sure you understand. There won't be any issues, will there? Why? Don't you trust me? I'll be honest. You're an outsider. The first outsider to be allowed access to the Institute in quite a long time, in fact. There's little precedent for this situation, so it's only natural to take extra precautions, hmm? It's nothing personal, I assure you. Now, Father has asked that I provide you with a brief overview of the Synth Retention Bureau. Our primary responsibility is the recovery of escaped synths that are hiding among the human population on the surface. Why would synths want to escape? Synths do not want. They might look like human beings, but they're machines. As to why they're escaping? That matter is currently under investigation. Our main instrument is the Courser, a third-generation synth assigned to operate on the surface. Coursers hunt down and reclaim synths that have escaped the Institute. They are highly self-sufficient, trained in combat, infiltration, and tracking. In a word, our Coursers are relentless. But I gather you know all this, since you've encountered one already. In fact, I'd very much like to know how you defeated it. Why does it matter? If there is some defect in coarser combat programming, then it must be identified and corrected. I suppose I'll have to ask robotics to perform detailed diagnostics on the entire production run. As if we don't. Now, unless you need something else, I'll get back to work. If you're the acting head of the SRB, who are you filling in for? Dr. Zimmer holds that position. He's supervising the retrieval of some of the more high-profile units. In his absence, I keep things running smoothly. Hi there.
As you know, Father is granted full access to our visitor from the surface. That includes the entirety of the SRB. While we must accommodate Father's wishes in this matter, we must also remain diligent. Refrain from discussing any sensitive information, especially the ongoing investigation involving the Gen 3 synths. In an, in a, in an ideal world, the railroad, the railroad, the railroad will have had no influence on our guest. We do not live in an ideal world. Director Rayo. Due to recent developments in our ongoing investigation into the myth missing synths, I am adjusting our policy regarding discussion of this subject with personnel outside of SRB. In brief, details of the investigation are now classified and cannot be shared with anyone other than SRB personnel, and even then, such conversations can take place only here in the SRB facilities. Those who are found to be in violation of this policy will face the strictest discipline. Director Ayo. I'm starting to wonder if M762, the infiltration unit, McDonnell, hasn't begun to outlive its usefulness. Assuming the identity of Diamond City's mayor has provided us with invaluable intelligence over the years but suspicions have only continued to mount. This latest incident, the publications of that newspaper article, specifically calling McDonald's humanity into question, might just be the tipping point. I've spoken with Ao, and we both agree. If the situation does become untenable, reclamation seems unfeasible. M762 was specifically engineered to mimic the actual human McDonald. As such, the unit's synthetic biology is that of someone overweight and grossly out of shape. A memwipe would kill any psychological weaknesses attributed or self-perceived old age. But that body lost cause. The real irony here is that M762, in one of its dispatches back to the Institute, requested a future posting in the coursers citing loyalty and years of surface. And that request alone was evidence of enough self-awareness and independence to completely eliminate him from contention, never mind the fact that he wouldn't even fit into the uniform. Determination. When and if M762's identity is eventually compromised, the unit is effectively decommissioned in field. No reclamation. No institute assistance, given its relative age and physical condition, not to mention the danger coherent in an infiltrator unit's discovery, further lifespan, further lifespan estimated at two weeks maximum. Secord. It has come to my attention that certain colleagues who are dissatisfied with our policies and procedures have, on more than one occasion, tried to circumvent an established process for registering their complaints with Father, and have tried to gain access to our secure facilities in order to complain in a more direct manner. I'm sure I need not remind you that the SRB is off-limits to all personnel not assigned to this division. Do not allow yourself to be browbeaten, cajoled, intimidated, or otherwise manipulated into allowing anyone who lacks the appropriate clearance to enter the SRB. Failure to uphold this mandate will result in severe discipline. As you're all aware, Father has asked that we monitor our power usage carefully and try to be as efficient as possible. As a point of personnel emphasis, we should strive to be efficient in everything we do. 
but our division has needs that are unique among the various branches of the Institute. The fact is, sometimes our operations require resources that we cannot readily disclose due to the sensitive nature of what we do. I place my trust in your judgment. If you require additional power or any other resources to carry out your work, then take what you need. Consult me if you have any concerns or questions, but know that the responsibility of meeting your project deadline falls upon your shoulders, and I won't accept limited power availability as an excuse for failing to meet these deadlines. In short, do what you need to do, and if anyone objects to the way in which we carry out our work, I will deal with those objections myself. Director Ao. This dude needs to be handled. <laughs> X320 deposit 361 count bottle caps. AO J requisition 100 count fusion cells. X688 withdraw. 1 count rifle armament. X688 withdraw. 20 count fusion cells. X182 withdraw. 1 count standard coarser armored coat. C cord A deposit. 30 count pulse grenade armament. X182 withdraw. 1000 count battle caps. Logins. C cord A. Accessed inventory management. AOJ. Initiate reclamation procedure on unit D865. X688 accessed departmental notices. AOJ opened reclamation status. Stasis Chamber 3. C Court A accessed departmental notices. Yeah, I don't like what I see here. People are out of control. Supplies for your missions on the surface. How may I assist you today? Sure. Let's take a look. Sean, uh, about this synth. You mean the child? It's a fascinating project, really. There are issues to be solved, of course, but we've made remarkable progress. Why build it to look like you? We've advanced the technology behind synths to a point where this struck me as an interesting variation. A new angle, if you will. Modeling it after myself seemed only natural, what, with the Institute's records and my genetics and physiology. I'll make sure it's brought back online in the near future. You'll have an opportunity to interact with him further. But, I'll admit I'm curious. As a parent looking for a child, looking for the younger version of me, what do you think? Do you think you could love him? Like you would a real boy?
Uh, this is all... It's too much. I just don't know anymore. I understand. You've been through quite a lot. I wouldn't claim to know everything you're feeling, but... If in some small way the boy's presence can help, I hope you'll keep an open mind. Disassembled. We can use your components to make something that's actually useful. Yes, sir. Synths aren't human beings, but supposedly they're the future of humanity. I'll never understand it. Hey, Doc. You know what happens when people get robots to do all their work? They get fat and lazy, that's what. Real people doing real thinking and real work. That's the future I want. that's how you feel, why not leave? Because we could do so much more. But no, everyone is obsessed with these damn synths. It's wasted potential. That's what it is. In any case, I suppose I should say, welcome. Perhaps a fresh perspective will do some good around here. This is day eight of trial six. The last week has been very productive, but exhausting. I think we'll need a break after this. Benet has done some really marvelous work with the personality mesh. It's, well, it's, it's almost too good. The responses map almost identically to expectations. Some of the most lifelike I've seen. Of course, it's All not really Sean. None of his memories are in there. That, even now, would be a step too far. It's starting to have an effect on the team, I think. I know I've been caught up in the moment once or twice. Just a second or two, forgetting that he's not a real boy. Still, I think we'll need to consider restricting him to the lab only for the moment. I'm well aware that others are... I think he's actually lost his mind. I can't believe he really expects me to do this. I've always been on board with the Gen 3 program. It makes sense, but this? Nothing good can come from this. How am I supposed to explain to my staff that Sean wants a child synth for no immediately apparent valid line of research? And to base the physical features off records of his own childhood? It defies all logic. No, I can't do this. I won't. Welcome to the Institute, ma'am. Report anything suspicious to the SRB. It's my responsibility to make sure this place runs smoothly. Doc? They weren't kidding. You really are here. Well, all right. I'm Allie. Allie Fillmore. You can think of me as the Institute's chief engineer. When Father told us about you, I could hardly believe it. You've been through so much, I think most people would have just given up. If you don't mind my asking, what was it that kept you going all that time? I just wanted to find my son and keep him safe. Now that you've found him, I hope you're proud of the great man he grew up to be. Now. I'll give you a quick rundown of the facilities division, and then I'll answer any questions you might have afterward. As you might guess, we keep the Institute's mechanical and electrical systems running smoothly. We maintain and upgrade all of the systems that make it possible to live and work in a place like this. There's a lot of machinery behind these walls that recycles the air and water, and provides power to the laboratories and quarters. The work we do might not be as exciting as some of the other departments, but it's at least as important. So. Now that you're here and you've spoken to Father, does that mean you're on board? On board with what? The Institute, of course. 
Sean implied you operated on a level, if not equal, and at least similar to the rest of us. Curious. If there's anything else you'd like to know about the facility's division, I'm happy to discuss it. Who built this place, originally? Has it been here long? The construction of the Institute is the work of generations of scientists. The original survivors of the war, our progenitors, took refuge in the basement of the old Commonwealth Institute of Technology. Over time, their sons and daughters dug deeper into the Earth and built increasingly sophisticated habitats and laboratories. It's a process that's still going on today. Even now, we're digging out tunnels for new facilities and infrastructure. Just think what this place will look like a hundred years from now. I hope I'm there to see it. Den of inequity. Humanity's future is taking root right here. Doctor? Welcome. So good to have you here. Dr. Clayton Holdren, head of the Bioscience Division. I can't wait for you to see the work we're doing. It's truly amazing. Like what? I was just about to explain that. As the name implies, the Bioscience Division specializes in fields of studies such as botany, genetics, and medicine. Our most important directive is to ensure the health and well-being of everyone in the Institute. To that end, we cultivate highly specialized breeds of flora for use in food and medicine. We've even started to explore the idea of synthetic animal life. You probably saw the gorillas. They're really just a pet project at this point, but the potential is exciting nonetheless. The gorillas are synths too? They are indeed. Judging by your reaction, we've done a good job making them seem lifelike. The initiative is still in its early stages, but the prospects are very exciting. I'm sure I've taken up enough of your time as it is. But I have to ask, have you decided whether you'll join us? I'm not sure. Uh, right now I'm just trying to keep an open mind. It's a big decision, I know. But it's also a rare and important opportunity. No need to rush to judgment. In any case, I imagine you'll want to continue looking around. Or, if you prefer, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Tell me more about those synth gorillas. On the whole, I'd say they were a success. Their behavior does generally match what our historical data says it should be. Unfortunately, we had a few early setbacks. The creatures can become suddenly aggressive, and they're quite strong. They destroyed two of their synth handlers. So now we keep them in an isolated habitat where they can be safely observed. Dr. Holdren? Anything I can help you with? I'm good for now. Thanks. Take care, then. Now that you've had a chance to see the Institute firsthand, what do you think? You've got technology here that I never dreamed possible. It's amazing. I'm glad you can appreciate what we've accomplished. None of it has been easy. Ultimately, all our knowledge and resources are focused on a single goal. The goal is best summarized by our motto. Mankind. Redefined. Unfortunately, no advancement comes without occasional setbacks. As remarkable as our synths are, they can be... dangerous without proper supervision. The superior synth mind and body attempting to wrestle with something approaching free will can be a recipe for chaos.
What do you mean by proper supervision? I mean that while they are here in the Institute, fulfilling the purpose for which they were designed, our synths perform admirably. As you're about to see, however, they can become unpredictable when set loose. A rogue synth has taken over the Raider Gang at Libertalia. His memories have been erased, and his identity altered. He believes he's a man named Gabriel. Under his leadership, the Raiders have taken many innocent lives. I've dispatched a courser to Libertalia. I'd like you to join him and reclaim that synth. Who erased his memories? And why? Those idealistic radicals who call themselves the Railroad are behind it. We'll deal with them in time. But right now, the priority is to reclaim that synth before more harm is done. Now you should get moving. Many people are in danger, and a delay could cost lives. and loaded. Elder Maxon? I received word that Dr. Lee is returning to us. How cooperative do you think she'll be? Will she be harmed if she doesn't cooperate? Absolutely not. We have big plans for Dr. Lee, including the resurrection of one of her greatest creations. The last thing we'd want to do is kill the Golden Goose. As soon as Dr. Lee arrives, we'll interrogate her aboard the Pridwin. She's been under the Institute's influence for the last decade, and we can't afford to take any chances. Now, I believe you still possess an important piece of data that Proctor Ingram is eagerly awaiting. I want you to bring it to her immediately. Once again, Knight, you don't fail to impress. Dismissed. Here's your holotape, Proctor. Hope the data on that thing was worth it. Thanks. You know, it's good to see you're still in one piece. I wasn't sure what the Interceptor would do to you. You didn't expect me to survive the trip? A device like the Signal Interceptor is way out of my league. I was hoping you'd make it, but I find it tough to have faith in technology I don't understand. Speaking of technology I don't understand, I'll get this holotape to Proctor Quinlan. I'm dying to find out what's on it. What do you hope to find on there? Whatever the Institute doesn't want anybody to know. Before we jump to conclusions, let's see what Quinlan scribes can get off of it. I'm sure the Institute has all of their data heavily encrypted, so it's going to take some time to crack. After that, we'll have to see what we've got. There's no telling what we might have grabbed off their mainframe. In the meantime, I've got a new assignment for you. So, I bet you're eager to get your hands dirty on our new project. How much has Maxon told you about it? He didn't tell me anything. Makes sense. We've been trying to keep it under wraps until the time was right. Come on. It's this way. Unless you're blind as a bat, I'm sure you've noticed that we've been building a gantry on the tarmac. Maxon and Kells have been looking for something that'll tip the balance when we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Institute. Now, the Pridwin might be a big beast, but she's not built for fighting. That's where our new project comes in. This storage bay full of parts is what's left of Liberty Prime. The Brotherhood used it in the Capital Wasteland as a weapon against the Enclave. 
It's the most advanced robot the Brotherhood has ever had at its disposal. Unfortunately, Liberty Prime was destroyed in the line of duty. I've spent the better part of the last few years piecing him back together. And if you think that was easy, try rebuilding a Protectron while you're blindfolded. In order to get Liberty Prime fully operational, we're going to need your help. My help? I don't know a thing about robot repair. Why don't we leave the repairing to my scribes? You're going to be doing the legwork. Now, the good news is that we've got most of Prime's parts fully assembled. The bad news is that it's going to take more than a few rivets and some spot welding to get them working again. The first problem is his CPU. It's fragile, and every time we try to feed power to it, it blows itself out. Why is the power blowing out his CPU? Liberty Prime has a highly complex power system. A good deal of that system was damaged when he exploded. So I'm working in the dark trying to come up with parts on my own. Luckily, you were able to convince Dr. Madison Lee to return to the Brotherhood. She was on the original build team for Liberty Prime a little over a decade ago. I've already spoken to her, but she's reluctant to work on Prime for some reason. If you could get her down here to lend a hand with his power system, we can get the big guy moving. Parties will have their leave compensated at the next available opportunity. That is all. Captain, I need you to prepare the Pridwin for departure. Archivist Knox has completed the analysis of the energy readings that we've received from Paladin Dance's recon team, and has concluded that they're being produced by the Institute. Knox is certain that the energy readings could only be produced by artificial means, and only with an extremely advanced level of technology. Judging from the frequency of the readings, we both agree that some type of device or weapon is being deployed by the Institute, which means we need to head to the Commonwealth as soon as possible. I'm not certain what type of ploy the Institute is attempting to unleash a plot in the world, but I'll be damned if I'm going to stand by idly and let it happen. All stations are reporting green, and all personnel are aboard the Pridwin. I've gone over her from the bow to stern, and she's ready to depart. With all due respect, it would be helpful if you could let me know exactly where we're headed. It's difficult preparing this vessel properly, not knowing what type of environment we're flying her through. I am well aware that we're pointed north, but just how far are we going? And what can we expect when we get there, Captain? As requested, I've sent over my evaluation of Proctor Ingram's capabilities in the field. In my professional opinion, Ingram is fully capable of handling field operations and would benefit any team fortunate enough to have her with them. Before the Pridwin left the Capital Wasteland, I spent six months helping her design the power armor frame she's using to enhance her mobility. She's trained in the armor rigorously and is fully qualified, actually more than qualified to be placed with our ground troops. I've been treating wounded soldiers for almost two decades, and I've yet to see anyone that can match Ingram's level of commitment and determination. Confining her to the ship would be a waste of resources and a damn shame. Now that we've arrived in the Commonwealth, I'd like to establish trade relations with the locals. I'm going to need a standard sweep and retrieve team, and one of our vertebrates in order to make that happen. There are several caravans that roam the Commonwealth, and we'll use the vertebrates to track them. If any of the caravans gets jumped, we can swoop in and lend a hand to let them know 
that were the friendly eye in the sky. Since you can't normally buy that kind of protection from mercenaries, we'll be certain to get the best prices and values for trades. I've used the same tactic in the Capital Wasteland. And it worked wonders. Out here with the threat of the Institute looming over their heads, we'll have these merchants eating out of our hands. After examining technical documentation brought in by one of our patrols, I've identified Fort Strong as a priority target. The location was an experimental weapons testing facility, and according to their manifests, it should still contain a sizable stockpile of fat man shells. According to the patrol, the fort is inhabited by super mutants, so we're in serious jeopardy of losing the stockpile if something isn't done immediately. Karen, I really miss you, baby. I hope you're safe out there. Remember to keep the doors locked at night, and the shotgun I gave you loaded at all times. Don't trust anyone unless you know them, and even then, keep an eye on everything they do. I don't know how long this tour will last, but I promise to come back safe. Love you. Opened with moving your king's pawn two spaces, eh? Smart move. Try to control the center of the board and free up the queen. And one of your bishops. I bet you think I'm going to mirror your move. But guess what? I'm going to move my queen's pawn two spaces so I can teach you a little something called the French defense. Don't worry, you'll get the hang of this game. Hey, Mom. They're letting me send out a message before we initiate radio silence. I'm working with a pretty decent officer, a guy named Kells. He treats us well as long as we do what we're told. Working with the Brotherhood has been an amazing experience so far. It's nice to finally be making a difference in this messed up world. Gotta go now, Mom. Say hi to Daniel for me. Chalk up two more dead barrels. That makes a total of 17 since I've been out here. You wouldn't believe how easy they go down when you hit them with a laser rifle. It slices right through the ugly things like butter. When I get back from this tour, I'm going to take you feral hunting. Trust me, you'll love it. For now, you'll just have to stick to hunting the local mole rats with your zip gun. I hope this message gets to the right person. My name is Knight Boda, and I served with your son, Initiate Arlen. I'm sorry to inform you that Arlen was shot and killed during one of our field training operations. I wanted you to know he died a brave death, saving the life of three other Initiates in the process. There's nothing I can say that will soften the blow of losing a child but I wanted you to know that it was an honor to fight at Arlen's side. You should be proud of the sacrifice he made for the sake of his country. I've sent his personal belongings back to the Citadel. You have my deepest condolences for your loss. Everything holding together? Trust me, you'd know. Good. Uh, firing! All right, all right. Everything looks nominal, and you didn't scuttle the ship. Thanks, Initiate. Sure. Anytime. Personal Log Entry 142. I can sum up living on the Pridwin in four words. I miss field assignments. Don't get me wrong. The research we're doing is exciting stuff, but life on this ship is a nightmare. 
I'm trapped in this metal tube 18 hours a day. I still can't decide who smells worse, the soldiers or the mole rats. And what passes for conversation among the grunts makes mutants seem scholarly. I'm going to speak to Proctor quickly. Field scribes cannot have one. Your concerns are noted, That's Scribe. Victoria. Give Proctor Ingram my thanks for letting me borrow you. Hey, scribe Naraya. Feel free to have a look at the specimens, but please don't touch anything. I refuse to be held responsible if you are injured. Are all these creatures yours? Well, they're an important part of my research, if that's what you mean. I'm on the cusp of discovering how these creatures' bodies have adapted to the radiation that's infiltrated their habitats. If I can crack the code, I can equip our troops with a protective compound far superior to Rad-X. What do you mean, crack the code? The genetic code? The DNA sequences that are in every living thing. You see, the ionizing radiation left behind by the Great War kills because it damages most living things on a cellular level. However, after several generations, these creatures' bodies have adapted by altering their genetic makeup to prevent cellular disruption. I believe I've discovered how I can replicate that genetic restructuring rapidly. Instead of decades, I can do it in moments. For a short period of time, anyway. Why alter it for a short period of time? Why not do it permanently? Attempting to alter the genetic code permanently? That's too close to what happened with FEV and Spawn, the super mutant. I'm not willing to take a chance like that. I wish I could show you a sample of the compound, but unfortunately I've hit a stumbling block preventing me from synthesizing a sample. The specimens I've already captured can only produce so much blood and genetic material. If I try and harvest too much, they'll die. What I need are more samples of blood from the creatures roaming the Commonwealth. No problem. I'd be glad to help. I appreciate your confidence in my abilities, sister. I've modified your Pip-Boy to scan the corpse of any freshly killed creature that has the proper type of blood in its body. All you have to do is pick up any viable sample and bring it back to me. Hey, I really appreciate you doing this for me. It's nice to know I'm not the only person in the Brotherhood with an open mind. As we've been traveling towards the Commonwealth, I've been preparing my makeshift laboratory in the rear cargo hold of the Pridwin. When we arrive, Quinlan says he'll be sending out several patrols with the express purpose of collecting viable field specimens. My job is to oversee the dust section and study of anything the patrols bring aboard. I've always agreed with the notion that the quickest way to learn your enemy's weakness is by examining them from the inside out. I hope I don't have to wait too terribly long to put that notion to the test. Quinlan's collection teams have already brought super mutant and synth specimens aboard. I've collected a fair bit of data from their remains, but have yet to discover anything that will give our soldiers an advantage in the field. As far as the super-mutant specimens go, they're quite different from the strains present in the Capital Wasteland, so most of our anatomical records require updates, which takes time. And the synth specimens, they're a complete mystery. The models we've recovered are almost entirely mechanized, so I've been coordinating with Proctor Ingram, since she's our resident robotics expert. I suppose it's only a matter of time before I have some answers. In the meantime, I'm going to begin working on a special project of my own design. I've brought several mole rat specimens aboard for my special project. I'm convinced that the key to unlocking improved radiation resistance is in tenacious little creatures like these. If they've learned to adapt to the radiation blanketing the Commonwealth, with a little help, we can too. I know most of the crew thinks I'm crazy, but I'm certain that I'm on the right track. 
and I just need to make as many viable blood samples as possible to make my theory a reality, which is difficult right now, since Maxon has most of our teams sweeping for technology. I'll see what I can do with my mole rat specimens, but I'm not sure it will be enough. I've run into a stroke of luck today. One of the new recruits has agreed to do a little field research for me and bring back as many viable blood samples as they can find. I was even more fortunate that they possessed a Pip-Boy that I could modify to extract the blood from whatever creatures they killed during their missions. Now all I have to do is wait until our new recruit returns and my special project can continue in earnest. While I'm pleased that you're settling into your new role as our medical examiner, I'm a bit dismayed that your attention appears to be focused on your own personal projects. The dissection and examination of the supermutant and synth corpses need to be your top priority. Don't make me regret placing you in charge of that laboratory, Niraya. I have plenty of other scribes waiting in line who are just itching for you to fail. I'm sending the mole rats that you asked for on the next vertebrate flight from the police station. I have no idea what you want them for. Those things bite, and they crap all over the place. It was a pain in the ass to collect them alive, so you better have that case of whiskey you promised ready for the return flight after the pilot drops them off. As far as getting a Brahmin up there, you can forget it. I talk to the pilot and he refuses to shove one of those disgusting things into his ship. I've been informed by several members of the crew that you're keeping several mole rat specimens in the laboratory area of the ship. While I can appreciate their value as biological specimens, I'm sure you understand that these creatures are filthy and emit an unpleasant odor in enclosed spaces such as our hull. I'll permit you to keep them if you can assure me that you'll have Proctor Ingram devise some type of ventilation system to help mitigate the smell. Try to remember that you're sharing a space where people have to eat and sleep, Scribe. I expect a full report by the end of the week. I'm sending back a sample of DNA that's been encrypted. I want you to deconstruct the code and then compare it to our personnel files immediately. I'll send along the password to my database, which contains samples of every registered soldier's DNA for comparison. This is absolutely top priority, and I want you to perform the work in isolation. Please do not share your findings with anyone but myself, Lancer Captain Kells, or Elder Maxon. You have 24 hours to complete your findings, Naraya. Don't let me down. Come now, ma'am. There's science to be done. Looks dead. Put one more in its head for good measure. I take a chance. If you're here to talk me into working on Liberty Prime, you can forget it. What changed your mind? Nothing changed my mind. I promised you I'd return to the Brotherhood, and I've kept my end of the bargain. Do I need to remind you why you made that promise in the first place? No, that won't be necessary. Tell Proctor Ingram to get her scribes ready. It's going to take a hell of a lot of work to get Liberty Prime back online, but we'll get it done. I 
wish your people would have been a bit more careful, Proctor. The good news is that the damage isn't irreversible, and I should be able to get the power flowing into his CPU core without overloading. If your people stay out of my way, that is. Hmm, charming, isn't she? Yeah. Sorry about that, Ingram. Don't worry about it. We might be butting heads on a few issues, but I've dealt with worse. Besides, Dr. Lee's worth all the aggravation. We're working with one of Prime's original designers. I don't see it getting any better than that. In fact, since things are going so well, we're gonna have you start building as electromagnetic actuators. What do the actuators do? Pretty simple, really. The actuators are what allows Liberty Prime's arms and legs to move. Prime's new limbs are way too heavy for the simple hydraulic pistons he had in the past. We're gonna have to rip those out, construct a brand new system using electromagnets, and install them in his limbs. What we need you to do is build the actuators for us. Now that you know what the actuators are, you need to know how to make them. These are the plans and the materials list. Don't lose them. Now before you get that look on your face, you'll be happy to know that we have plenty of the raw materials on that list right here at the airport. The only thing we need you to head out and find is a high-powered magnet. According to Proctor Quinlan, the best place to find one is in any of the ruined hospitals around the Commonwealth. We've already sent out a few teams to find the rest of the high-powered magnets you'll need. They should be back by the time you return. Once you start building the actuators, we need one for each limb, so you'll need to make a total of four. Good luck.